high class. So this lecture will be on the vertebrates or the vertebral column. So here's the vertebral column and it has this distinct shape. So now we're looking at the vertebral column from the lateral view. So there are 24 vertebrates starting from the vertebrate number one, this one, number one, to sacrum. So this one is number 24. So there's a 24 vertebrates. So this part is called sacrum, also part of the vertebrates. And this one is called coccyx, also part of the vertebrates. However, we say there's a 24 vertebrates or 26 vertebrates. So it's 24 plus 1 plus 2 equal 26. But in reality, the sacrum has five fused vertebrates, like 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. But just because the fused, we call them as just 1. And the coccyx, the tail, there's four of them, one, two, three, four, but we'll also call it one. So it's basically 24 vertebrates and there's other two, so it's 26. So let's look at the vertebral column once again. So there are 24 or 26, but it's broken down in five or three divisions. So the sacral division, right, and coccyx division, right? So this is sacral and this is coccyx. But we're mostly concerned about these three divisions of the vertebral column. So the first division is called cervical division. Has seven vertebrates. Just because it's called cervical, it starts with the letter C. So all of the vertebrates are from C1 to C7. Right? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you see the seventh articulates with the next one, which is not eight, but one. C1 through C7 cervical, and then we start on thoracic vertebrates. So there's a 12 thoracic vertebrates, and there's 12 thoracic costal ribs, right? 12 on one side, 12 on another side. So there's a T1, through T12. So, but how do you know where the T1 starts, right? So instead of counting from the cervical one through seven, whatever the first rib attached to the first vertebrate, right? First rib attached to the first vertebrate. So then this vertebrate is T1. And when we're gonna go all the way down, the last rib, which is the floating rib, rib number 12 attached to this vertebrate it is a t12 so there are 12 thoracic vertebrates so then the next one is a lumbar starts with l1 all the way to l5 so there's seven cervical vertebrates this 12 thoracic vertebrates and five lumbar vertebrates. And then there's a sacral and the coccyx. So if you want to remember how many vertebrates there are, C7, breakfast at seven, T12, lunch at 12, and L5, dinner at five. And then there's the two snacks, however you want to remember it. All of them, we call by C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C7, or T1, T12, and so on, and L1, L2, 3, 4, and so on. However, the first two vertebrates of the cervical region has their distinct or specific names. So the first vertebrate, if we will isolate, looks like that, right? It has a lot of facets just because it has a lot of articulation. So the first one is called atlas. So the atlas that supports the world, right? Standing on its two, the hands are out and supports this globe. And that globe would be the skull. So it articulates with occipital bone, with these facets, articular facets or occipital condyles. The, the term condyle uh, 
in, in the skeletal system something that is kind of smooth. So the scandiles articulates with the superior uh, facets. So it's very different looking vertebrate compared to other vertebrates. So this on the side a transverse processes and this is a spinose process and there's a huge foramen right here because the spinal cord passes through that. So you see the spinal cord passing right through those vertebrates. So which vertebrate has that hole right in the middle because the spinal cord passes through each vertebrate all the way down. So that hole is called vertebral, it's a vertebrate foramen of the atlas. Then only cervical vertebrates has extra two foramens on both sides on the transverse processes. So all the way to number seven also has this foramen. So what if I will take number T1 and all the way down to the lumbar vertebrates, so there's only one foramen there is for the spinal cord so there are no other foramens on the side so the reason for this lateral or transverse foramen is for the passage of vertebral arteries so you see there is vertebral artery from the heart here's the heart passes all the way all the way up into the brain and it passes or it's kind of protected by this transversus foramen or arterial foramen. But what's interesting, it's kind of skipping on this C7. So the second C2 cervical vertebrate has its also its own name. It's called axis. You see this little pinch that's sticking out, so it's called dense. Helps our head to move to the left and to the right to say no so it's called dance of axis and again here are the facets for the articulation with other bones so there's pretty tiny uh, transverse processes and it's kind of tiny uh, spinose process so this dance is tooth like superior projection process so it basically extends superiorly from the upper aspect of the of this vertebral body to articulate with the inferior arch of the atlas. So then if you look closely, C2 axis all the way to C7, you see this spinose processes kind of separating, right? So this is for the connective tissue so this is for nuchal ligament nuchal ligament so this nuchal ligament supports uh, the cervical spine and allows for deflection limiting the excessive movement of the cervical uh, also provides the insertion for the muscle attachments into the cervical spinous processes like serratus posterior superior uh, and trapezius muscles. So you see it's like right in between of these verifications, right? So it's kind of separates. So it goes all the way down. So it's a supraspinous ligament. So there's another name for that is like a bifid or like a cleft. From the research, it shows that uh, this bifid or they call it non bifid bifid it's like it's there it's not there it depends on the race and the sex of individual so it's based on one of the research from 1999 so but again they provide the attachment site for the muscles and the nuchal ligament so why is it important to know that uh, that spinous process in the specifically in the cervical uh, vertebrates they present there so when you're holding two vertebrates so you're quickly able to identify if this is a cervical or thoracic or lumbar so you already know that it's cervical because it has two extra foramens for uh, the arteries and it has this verification 
so when you're holding the C2 you know it's a C2 or the axis just because it has this dense and when you're holding C1 the atlas it looks like nothing else like pretty flat like kind of almost circular so then we proceed down to thoracic vertebrates and again you already know that it's T1 because there's a first rib so when you look at the thoracic it's a little bit bigger the body is kind of more prominent more bigger compared to the cervical just because we are progressing inferiorly because it has to support more weight so but you can kind of tell the difference between thoracic and the lumbar so when you look at the spinal process or spinous process it is kind of thick right it's almost like a square compared to thoracic you see the thoracic spinous processes they're pointing down like very pointy like you see it going down going down going down and then lumbars lumbars are like very thick like that so that's on spinal column on the vertebrates so the last l5 articulates with the sacrum so here's the sacrum so we call it as a one bone but it's actually one two three four five but they are fused together uh, so this is a posterior part this is an uh, anterior part so this is the articular facet of the base of the sacrum and this is the articular surf, uh, surface right so that facet articulates with uh, with the hip bones or with the osi it's just another name for that so and this little nudges right here it's called they called a uh, sacrum uh, cornu so it articulates with the coccyx and it's coccygeal um, with coccygeal her uh, horns and provides the attachment site for the um, intercanual uh, ligaments here are these horns coccygeal cornu so that's basically everything uh, on the vertebral column so when with this we conclude the axial skeleton.